Hey, what's going on, everybody? Bauer Brown here. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Uh, the video that I have for you guys today, we're going to be talking about uh, basically a little bit about prefabs and repurposing items and and uh, fleshing out your maps, you know, decorations, that sort of thing, right? So I've been getting a lot of questions lately about where do I get my prefabs, um, how I make certain things, you know, things along those lines, right? So I think somewhere along the line, some people might be missing the fact that there is a ton of objects available through the base game maps themselves, right? So you have three maps that we can work with. You have, you know, the French map, the Alpine map, and the US map, all right? So within these maps, I mean, you can see all the houses we have. You zoom in on any one of the houses here, right? So we have lots of deco objects. We have, you know, a table, chairs, you know, you got this little tent here. We can export any of these items and re re import them into our into our map that we're working with, right? So we have lots and lots available to us. Now, I have in the past I've gone through and I used to go through each one of these maps, you know, and one by one, like, hey, I like this flower pot here, okay, and I would export that item, and I'd start making my own collection. I think it's kind of daunting sometimes because there's lots of objects you might be missing some. You may you, you get the idea, right? Uh, so more often than not, I will go up to a uh, I'll see what's available on the internet. So when you go into like your prefab list here, uh, usually find like a deco package or, or something along those lines. All right. See so decoration vehicles. That's pretty nice. Right. Have some vehicles in your map. Um, but anyhow, download one of these deco packages and use that. It's way, way easier, you know, than going through and, and, you know, having to find all these, these pieces individually. All right, so you don't have to worry about any extra overhead with them, um, any any texture files and stuff like that, because they're all base game items, right? Even though somebody uploaded them and and uh, made it seem like this this cool unique mod, they basically just did you know the heavy lifting for you and put all of these these you know smaller objects into one big you know collection, right? Which hey. I'm not knocking anybody for that. It's extremely helpful and I use them. So thanks to that guy. Right. But anyhow, like I said, they had a, it's, it's way easier than finding all these things for yourself. So once you have it imported onto your map, right? So you'll have something that says deco object, you know, uh, let me see if I can find one of my own right here. Let's see what I have. And uh, let's see, let's go into utilities, go into prefabs. Not sure what I have here as far as deco objects goes. I know my home computer, I have much, much more. Uh, let's see, I'm not seeing much here. Yeah, props maybe. All right, so here's, yeah, here's two of them. Decoration package. Let's see, how big are they? I can tell. All right, we'll use this one here. It seems like there's a lot more in it. What is this? I'll decorate. Okay, yeah, we're not using that one. This one I I I use, but I hate because they break it down into so many different i3ds, and you got to import each one of these just to find out what's inside of there. Um, it's a lot easier. See, so what you could do is import them all, all what is a 30, 41 of them. So you import all forty one, and then once you have them in the map put them into a group and re-export it as a single i3D. This way, when you need them, you don't have to go through all this hoopla of, of you know, importing each and every one of them just to find out what's inside of it. A pain in the you know what. All right, let's try this one. This one, ah, it's done the same way. Damn you people. <laughs> so, oh, I thought one of those would help. The deco packages that are all together. So let's grab one of these so I can at least show you what I'm talking about here anyhow. All right, so let's get that into the map. Minimize that. All right, so normally you'll have something that says, you know, deco, whatever. Now, when I use these, so if, say I'm working in this area here, right? So I'm putting something together in this area, working on this house. What I'll do is you can move that around. Just move it to a, a close field, right? So find a field that's close by like so, right? And then you can kind of go shopping. 
You know, you can look through it. All right, what do I need? You know, what can I use? So all of these objects here, even though you downloaded it from the internet, these are all base game. You do not have to worry about, like I said, about that extra overhead. All right. So here's some nice uh, ground dividers and stuff that you can use. Right. So you can do any number of things with these. Right. So look like trim along properties, parking lots, stuff like that. Um, so that comes in really handy. So make sure, you know, you look and, and you download some deco packages. Uh, now, an easy way to check to see if they're base game or not is when you're inside of here, uh, just click on the i3D itself. All right. Open it with Notepad. Or Notepad++ in this case. All right. And just looking down this list, you can see the dollar sign data. Dollar sign data. All right. So every single thing in that package is base game. Right. So you really don't have to worry about it. Uh, not only that, but you don't even have to have these in your project itself, right? So um, I just drugged that out of my utilities folder, all right? So I drugged that into my map from the uh, utilities folder, and I don't have to put that into my mod map, you know, into my local folders. I can use it right out of that folder because it points to the base game, right? So you guys should know that by now. All right, so that covers the object end of it. All right, so that, that's where I get a lot of my objects. Now, on the flip side of that coin, there's still additional objects and prefabs and stuff that you can download from the Internet, from any number of sites, right? You know, there's some pretty talented people out there that are, you know, working with Blender and they're making houses and all kinds of cool stuff. All right, and they're great to use, but use them, uh, limit the amount of use, right? So... Granted, it looks really, really nice, you know, when you can have your map look completely different. It's all fresh objects. Everything has a new look and a new feel to it. And it's completely awesome to have that. But your map gets bloated quickly, right? So you have all of these objects and these texture files and everything else in the shape files. You have all of that in your, in your local folders. And that has to get zipped up with your map. That has to be part of your map when you're done. Um, and and it can get bloated really, really quickly, right? So you can easily have, you know, a two kilometer map that's in, you know, in the gigabytes. And that's, you don't want that. You know, you don't need a two gigabyte, two kilometer map. That's just ridiculous. All right. And your performance is going to take a hit. It most definitely is to load up all of those objects. And it's just, so use, use some here and there, you know, just within reason, don't get carried away with it. Uh, so. I know that it gets hard. So say you're working on a four kilometer map. You have a lot of residential areas. You have a lot going on. Uh, first, I don't even know that there's that many prefabs available on the internet, you know, to make entire neighborhoods, you know, look fresh and exciting. Uh, so what I want to talk about is repurposing a lot of the items. All right. So you do have a lot of base game items like, you know, you can see right here that you can use in your maps um, that are available from any one of the base game maps. Uh, but take any one of the objects that you see. Let me find a good example. Okay, so for example, what I mean is it's, let's have a look at this house here, okay? Uh, so if you're working on your map and you're, you're doing like you're building neighborhoods or something, all right? Uh, you only have so many houses available to you uh, from base game objects, okay? So this particular house here, you know, if you're to use it, you know, here and there throughout your map, uh, it'll get to the point where you're using it, you're using it over and over and over and over, and it gets really stale really quickly, right? Too repetitive. All the houses look identical. Um, you really want to mix things up the best you can, right? Now, some of the tricks that I have is to try to break up the line of sight. Uh, so, like, if, for example, don't put two of these houses right smack dab next to each other because, you know, you can tell that it's the same house. So, looking you know, from, from where you can see, everything looks a little bit different, right? So no two houses look the same uh, and break up that line of sight. If you have to use another one, maybe it's like divided by trees or maybe it starts down here at the end of the block where, you know, you have to go pretty far and look at different houses, you know, before you get down here and you see the same one again, right? Um, so that's what I, I do to, to try to break up the monotony of having the same items. Um, but anyhow, let's get back into repurposing. So you have this house here, all right? So you can grab this garage door 
and you can use that somewhere else, right? So slap that over here, move it down a little bit, and there you go, voila. So we have another garage door on the side of this building. You know, you gave it not a whole new look, but a variation looks a little bit different, right? Um, and you can repurpose this door just about anywhere else, right? So if you move down a little bit, all right, so it looks like they might have used one there. Uh, let me see, where else could we use that? There's different places that you can use it, right? Uh, if you have like a smaller house, like something like, you know, something like this, which is already a garage, you know, but that easily you just kind of come up to the back of that and spin that around like so. Down. Move it over. Anyhow, I'm not going to fuss with this and keep picking at it, but you get the idea of, of where I'm going with this, right? So, you know, just like that, you got yourself a whole new garage, right? Um, and you can use this on, on any building anywhere. You know, you can put this on the side of a brick wall and there you go. You got yourself a garage door. So you see what I'm trying to get at with that. Now, the same house here, right? Uh, you, it, you can break this up into pieces. Right. So this this piece comes off. Right. So move that off. You know, maybe we don't need those windows or those windows you can use again somewhere else. You know, you can do any combination, you know, of these houses here. OK, so you got this little piece that you're able to move off. Right. So let's move this over here into the into the field. OK, so we got that there. Now experiment, you know, duplicate it. You know, you can control D duplicate it. All right, so you can, I don't know, maybe spin it, stick them together. Um, you get the idea, right? So you don't, you're not stuck with, with what they give you, right? So this is what giants themselves do, right? They, they just mash these things together and, you know, they come up with all kinds of different, you know, different ideas or different configurations, I should say, I should say right? Maybe you extend it a little bit like so, make it a little bit longer. Um, that doesn't look quite right. You have to goof with it a little bit, right? To get the look that you want. You're right there. All right, it looks a little bit better. What does it look like on the other side? Eh, it takes a little bit of work. Now, what you could do, those windows that I deleted, I could have plastered that right over that spot right there. And that would look pretty good. Put the garage door on this side. And there you go. You got a whole different looking house, you know, just like that. You didn't have to. You didn't have to download anything from the internet. Uh, you got things looking, you know, not so stale anymore. Um, and you can do any number of things with these, right? So looking through that prefab, you know, that that uh, that deco object that I had, that package there, um, you can probably find chimneys. You can find satellite dishes. You can find antennas. So you can put those on the roof. You know, you can do all that with it. Um, so there's a lot. That's how I get a lot of. Uh, a lot of the objects I use, you know, I do it this way. And this is how I, I break up the monotony so they don't, every single one of them looks identical, right? So, you know, this one looks just like the house next door to it and, and you get the idea, all right? So um, lots and lots and lots of items can be repurposed for different ways. So if you look at this, this runner along the bottom of this fence, right? So you got this, this concrete bar. All right, so let's see, let's go to the edge of this field here, right? So say this wasn't a field, it was a parking lot, something like that. You know, you could take that concrete bar, you know, spin it around. All right, so this instantly just became a curb. You know, it doesn't have to be the concrete bar from the bottom of a fence. It can be the curb on the side of a street or on the edge of a sidewalk, okay? All right, so it, it works really nice. You know, just about everything can be repurposed. It's it's up to you and your imagination. All right. And you're not locked into this, just this. Right. So you can have a much shorter piece. Uh, and these shorter pieces, by the way, work really, really nice if you're doing any kind of radius or curb. Right. So you can just kind of they're really, really easy to make a smooth looking curve with smaller pieces. And, then you know, longer runs, you can adjust this this length any way you want. Now, I don't recommend going halfway across the field, but. Eh, might work. 
All right. So like I said, you can adjust the length of it. You can adjust, you know, the width of it. You need something a little bit skinnier. You need something a little bit taller, you know, what have you. There you go. So I'll repurpose a lot of stuff that way. Um, I think that particular bar I actually use pretty many places, right? Like I said, you can adjust the size of it so you can tell it's the same piece um, and it comes in really handy. And the best part about it is it's base game, you know, change it up any way that you want and, uh, you know, use it over and over and over. And, you know, there's, there's no overhead that comes with it because it's a base game item. And that goes for everything that you see on this map. You know, any one of these buildings over here, I'm sure some of them come in pieces, some of them don't. Uh, but they can all be repurposed. Uh, just about everything can be repurposed in one fashion or another. Uh, like these, these street lamps right here, you know, I put these inside of telephone poles, right? So you see those utility poles, you know, there's packages that you can get all over the place, but none of them have lights on them. If you look in some areas, you know, that some areas, at least in the United States, they have a light on the, ut the utility pole itself. Well, I haven't really found any packages available, so I just put the light inside the utility pole and there you go, repurposed, right? So it looks good. I have no issues with it. You know, everything looked really, really good. All right. So one of the other things you can do, and I think a lot of people either aren't aware or they just don't know uh, that these, th these things can be done is if you go up here to go, uh, go to create, all right, go to primitive, let's say you need a... Uh, uh, and you can build so many primitives out of here. So let's say you need a, a piece of a wall. You want to build your own wall, right? And it doesn't have to be anything like fancy, just a concrete wall or a concrete slab or what have you, okay? So you have this cube right there. So you set that down. All right, now you can adjust the scale of it, right? And make sure, see how high we are here. Okay, so we'll make that a little bit higher like so. All right, so there you go. You got a wall. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right. It's pretty, pretty white looking wall. All right. But if you go into your material editor, right? So go into window, go into material editing. Okay. So you have this first thing here, uh, this first listing called albedo map. Right? So open that. Now, if we go into a uh, arming simulator into the uh, base game, all right. So you go into data, uh, let's say maps, map us. Let's look at some of the textures from the map US. All right. Now, if you if you navigate to this folder on its own, you can look through a lot of these. Well, at least on my home computer, I can where I don't have to see like these little GIMP symbols. Um, but there is a ton of textures in here that you guys can use. All right. So uh, here we got one for a brick wall. You want to make a brick wall? There you go. Actually, let's use that one right now. Um, what I was looking for is there's a concrete in here too. You can use a uh, look at this car dealer wood. So there's there's a wood texture for you. Right here is a couple concrete textures that I was looking for. Right now the brick wall has already been done, uh, but let's say concrete. So let's use the concrete diffuse. Okay, that looks pretty good. We click OK, and hey, how about that? Look at that. We have a very nice you know concrete slab. Use it any way you want. And this concrete slab, just like every other item that you can use, right? You can make it shorter, wider, taller. You can, you know, redo that any way you want. Now, the only thing with this, okay, um, when you when you work with something like this, you have this unnamed material up here, okay? So let's say you made this concrete slab right there, okay? And you want to create a second one. So let's duplicate that. Now, this would be the same as if I just created another cube, all right? And say, you know, for example, this is, I know it's duplicated, but, well, actually, I'll just show you. Let's show you that way. So this way, I'm not confusing you. All right, so let's go up to create, go to primitive cube, put that down, make it a little wider, make it a little taller. Hey, what's going on there? Uh-huh. It's already got that material on it, right? I don't want that. All right, well, okay, let's go in and change that. Let's make that a brick material instead, all right? So we'll go in here, and where was that brick? I wanna use brick. Okay, so we go, there we go. Let's use brick, we'll click open, okay. Damn it, what is going on here? 
Now you can see how nice that is. You know, it's a pretty nice brick wall. You know, not only that, you know, but the normal maps and uh, I think there's even a specular map in there. They're, it's nice. They have everything that you need is is good to go, right? Everything is is there for you. Now, this is kind of a problem. Like, let's say you made a really nice wall and on the other side, you want a brick wall on one side, you want a concrete on the other one. Well, you can't have it that every single object you create is going to have, you know, if you change the material on one, it changes them on all of them. All right, what you need to do from this point, right, is when you have an object like this, right, so you created a single object, you created this, this brick wall, all right, what you would do here is you would, you would export the selection, okay, and you don't need to export with files or anything like that, because this is all base game that you're working with, right, so you export selection, uh, find a place that you can export to, uh, right now, I'm, I'm going to just export it to the desktop, right, so we'll save it right on the desktop. And we'll just call it wall. Okay. All right. So now if we go and look on the desktop, I have this wall here. So take this wall, open it with uh, Notepad++. Okay. Now, as you look down, you can see you have this unnamed material. All right. This is what you want to change. All right. You have to give that, you know, something a little bit different, like a, Oh, I don't know, like wall material or, or something like that. Uh, now the material ID, I can't remember what I do about this. I think I usually give it like a, just give it a high, like nine, 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 nine. All right. And everything else can stay pretty much the same, right? Uh, you can look through here and see if there's anything that you need to change, but everything for the most part can stay the way it is. All right. So. <clears throat> Go ahead and, and click save on that. You know, once you have that change that it's a different material. All right. Now what you're gonna do is just re-import that back into your map. So bring this wall, re-import it into your map. All right, and you can also make it so it doesn't say cube anymore. It's, you know, it should say wall. You could have done that right through through the IC, I3D as well. Uh what's going on there? Did I goof it up? Yep, might have goofed it up. Let's see, what did I do there? What did I do? Uh, the name is wall.i3d. Okay. Wall diffuse, wall material, 999. Uh, maybe I don't change the actual material ID. Node ID, material ID. Oh, see, the material IDs need to match. All right, so let's keep that like that. I've definitely done this before. I've gotten it to work okay. Let me see here. Back in here. Okay, so the wall shows up. Uh, let's go back into material editor. It may still come up with unnamed material. No, it says wall material. So we do have a new material here, okay? Aye, aye, aye. It's been a while since I did this. All right, so now let's go back into the albedo map. Let's pick something different. Let's pick concrete, okay? Or how about wood? All right, let's give it a, a wooden look. All right, click OK. All right, so now you can see that this one changed the wood. And these two stayed as the brick wall, like they should be, okay? For some reason, I thought I had to change the material ID. But this is pretty nice. If you need a piece of plywood, you need a, oh, I don't know, maybe you just need a two by four, right? So you can shrink this down to a really small. You know, you can shrink the size of it this way as well. Whoa, a little too small. You know, but there you go. So now you have, you know, a nice piece of wood that, you know, you can use anywhere on your map, you know, shorten it up. Maybe you're doing, who knows? Like I said, this is up to you and your imagination, how you're going to use these items, right? So there's tons and tons that you can do on your own. Now, now granted, they're simple, right? So generally squares, I st <laughs> stick with mostly squares because they're easy to work with, uh, but it's, it, you're only limited by your imagination.
right? So if you're just going to sit here and stare at a screen for hours and hours and not come up with anything new, then that's kind of on you, right? You know, the materials are here. This is why they give you these things, right? So they give you plenty of textures to work with. Maybe not, you know, plenty, but they give you enough, you know, no doubt about that. And it's, that's not the only textures that, you know, you can work with. Like some people are afraid of some textures. Let's create a new one. Let's say, uh, let's create a new cube. All right. Put that down here. Now, of course, this is going to come up with the wood material already. All right. Cause, or no, it's going to be the brick wall, I think, cause this is the unnamed material. Yep. Brick wall. All right, so it's pretty important that, like I said, you got to export them and alter it so not everything comes up as a brick wall every single time, All right? So we go in here, back in this folder, like say here's like Animal Trader, Animal Trader Hall, or how about Animal Trader Diffuse? Doesn't matter, just pick one. Ooh, pretty. All right. So there you go. You you have basically the side of, I don't know, maybe you're going to build something, right? It looks pretty nice. You can make that a little bit smaller, a little bit bigger. Depending on how you want to use this, you're not locked into those, those single solid textures, right? Now, the other side is a little bit different. Have to experiment with some of these. Uh, these are a, a, bit, a bit more difficult to use because you do have stuff like this, right? Um, they're more vent for like, like a UV map or something like that, where, you know, you're mapping just a certain part of that image. Uh, but if you're familiar with Blender and you can work with Blender, all of those textures are available to, you know, to use, all right? So I don't recommend doing exactly what you did here, but experiment. Don't be afraid to experiment and try different things. All right. I mean, I've gone through here and I can look through any number of these textures. Now uh, you got asphalt roads that's in there. Okay. Maybe I don't recommend that one. <laughs> so like I said, trial and error, you got to try these out. All right. So here's the other thing that you can do. Like, so let's go back to concrete, right? So let's pick. All right. So we have this concrete diffuse right here. All right. Let me make sure concrete you up number two. Yep. Click open. All right. So we click OK on that. Now we're back to concrete. All right. But if you go down here to uh, let's see, we've got normal map. Let's open that up. OK, go back down to the concrete. OK, so we have our concrete normal right there. Use that. OK. Ah, yeah, yeah. All right, so maybe in this case, that doesn't work out quite the way we wanted it to. Um, what did I do there? Because I know maybe it's because it's the unnamed material. That could be it. Because I know on, uh, I've used that plenty of times. Anyhow, what I was getting at is you have a spot here for a normal map and this gloss map. If you're already going to, if you're going to give it a gloss map, that's this green one right here. The specular, that's your gloss map. All right. Now, and it could be just because I'm on that unnamed, unnamed material. I'm pretty sure that's probably what that deal is, you know, what that error was all about. Um, because I've done that more times than I can count where I've made my own brick wall. Now, you, like I said, export it, export it, change the material, um, do what you need to do as far as that goes. And you'll be, you'll be just fine. Re-import it. And in this way, you know, when you create a new object, it doesn't come up as a brick wall. It doesn't come up as a piece of concrete. Um, and you can reuse that object, save it, you know, put it in with your prefabs. And when you want to work on something next time, then there you go. You know, you have, you know, you have this piece of concrete, you have, you know, whatever. And then, you know, I had somebody recently asked me, you know, how do we, you know, where do I get my sidewalks from? Um, now, different sidewalks, you can get those from, uh, I think one of the uh, road packs that are out there has a sidewalk kit built in with it. Um, so you have prefab sidewalks, or you can take something like this, you know, and get it to the size you need it. All right, get it down to, you know, maybe little squares, make sure it's not too, too thick, you know, because you don't want to be wrestling with this huge, thick piece, but you get the idea, right? So duplicate it. 
maybe leave a tiny little gap between, maybe not. It's up to you. All right. Okay, and then there you have your sidewalk. Now it's very basic, right? Um, but from a distance, who's gonna know, right? It's gonna, it's gonna look like a sidewalk. You know, just if I was to cruise down the street in your tractor, it looks like a sidewalk to me, all right? And then, so you take that sidewalk there, and where's that curbing that I just had? And I lose things really easy, don't I? Over there? Do what I do with it? Hey, there it is. Okay, so you take this curbing that you have, Damn it, I would <laughs> what I do with my sidewalk. There it is. All right. All right. So you take your curbing, plop that down, give it a spin. All right. Line it up. See, this is honestly, this is the part that takes the longest for me. I've gotten my maps down to the point where my map itself, as far as like the fields and everything else, um, you know, everything being marked down on the ground, like all my roads are built, they're in the right place. My fields are all marked in the right place. All my info layers are done. I've gotten that down to the point where I'd say within a couple of days to a week, I'm already to the point where I can start fleshing out my map. And by that mean, by that, I mean, decorating everything, right? So getting, you know, building these sidewalks and, you know, everything else and getting that all built up. Because this part takes the absolute longest for me, right? So if, if you're mapping, and I'm telling you, you, you have to decorate these things properly, right? You have to have a pretty decent amount of detail inside of your map. Because if not, yeah, it just looks first, it looks like every other map out there. And it doesn't look that great, right? So you definitely want to keep things, you know, looking good, interesting. And for God's sake, spend a good amount of time fleshing out your map. You know, experiment. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll work on some videos, right, where I can show you how, you know, the techniques I use to color things in and, you know, different ways to make different foliages, right? So why is there no foliage on this map, by the way? Am I missing something here? Kind of strange. Maybe show foliages is off. Yeah, it was off. That's strange. Threw me for a loop on that one. All right, now I lost my my pretty sidewalk. Hey, there it is. All right. So now you can see see how nice that looks, right? And you would never ever know that those are just simple objects that you put together from within the game itself. You know, grab textures out of the folder, slap them on there, and there you go. You've got your own sidewalk. You know, not only that, but once you get this built up, right? So you can take pieces like this. Now, what do we have here? We got uh, these cubes here. Now you can get what I'm what I'm getting at is you can take all of these, you know, put them in a group all together. Control G, you get them into a group, and then export that as a sidewalk. There you go, and then you can move the whole entire piece. Right, because it's all it's a sidewalk. You just made your own prefab and then you can start putting together pieces of sidewalk. Right. And you can still, you know, you can still control the individual pieces. Now I like to leave that little gap in between because to me, you know, it looks a lot better, right? You you can tell that, you know, they're individual pieces instead of that one super long piece that just doesn't look that good. Um, but anyhow, what I, that's what I was saying. So stuff like that. That's how I get a lot of my objects. I didn't have to go, you know, download them off the internet. I'm not making, you know, my map completely bloated from stuff that, you know, has to load all these texture files and everything else. And now my map is now gigabytes and gigabytes. I mean, you notice like my last map, I think for Rocky Mountain, that was a four kilometer map. And I think it only came in at a, around 700 megs, maybe not even a full gigabyte. Right. Which is pretty darn nice. Uh, stuff like this, right? This is what I was saying about maybe I'll do a video showing you how I do a lot of my textures and my foliages and stuff like this. Adding textures like this, right, makes all the difference in the world. You know, not just plopping down a tree and a bush here and there. 
you know, layer it in there, you know, put different size bushes, put different, you know, here we got like a blueberry short, you know, we got that in there. There's probably like a, a room X in there. Um, I can see long grass in there. Here's that, like that ground cover. I forgot what that's called. But anyhow, you just layer all this in here, right? So don't stick with just a single texture. Mix your textures up, right? So use multiple textures in one area to, to get the effect that you're looking for. That's one thing that drives me crazy. I see a lot of these maps where, you know, you have a dirt road that's heading down the map. Now, sometimes I'm guilty of it myself. It depends on the situation, right? But all of their dirt roads is just one single line, one solid color, like no dirt, no stains, no nothing. You know, there's decals available in, in within these uh, base game folders as well, right? So go in there and look for the oil stains, look for, you know, any type of cracks and stuff like that. Um, some of those, they're very lightweight, so you can download those from the internet. Um, so like I said, it's not that you can't use anything that you download from the internet, just use it sparingly. You know, don't flesh out your entire map 100% full of objects that you downloaded from the internet because you're going to regret it. It might look amazing, no doubt about it. It would look amazing, um, but you're going to regret it. I still have one of my original maps from Epic, not, not original because I was making it for a while, but it was one of my first maps, I guess original, um, from FS19. And that's what I did. I had so many different mods and all this other stuff downloaded from the internet I had it all in this one map. And first the map is, is it's gorgeous. It really is. I was just in it today. As a matter of fact, looking around, I was looking for something in particular, but man, oh man, it took probably a solid 10 minutes for that game, for that map to load inside of giants editor. It was ridiculous because it had all of that stuff to load. Now you can imagine trying to play that in game. And I have, I can't, I don't care remember what the performance was like, but I didn't know any better. You know, that's was at a time I just didn't know. Um, I've learned a lot of hard lessons throughout the years, right? Um, so that's one of them. That's, that's what I wanted to get across to you guys. Cause I honestly, I get a lot of questions like, you know, where, you know, where'd you get this and, and where did you get that? And, you know, how do you make certain things? Well, there you go. That's how I make a lot of these objects, right? You know, I would use this sidewalk most anywhere. That that was super easy to make. You can see that I this was the repurposed, you know, base from a fence. And then the sidewalk piece I itself I made. You know, and that how easy was that? You don't have to be a blender guru, you know, guru or anything like that. And that looks nice. It's concrete, right? Looks very nice. You can use that for so many different applications. You know what? I would almost say that this this here, the one I made, looks better than a curb. The curb looks a little stretched. It looks a little eh, probably because that's meant to be a whole lot lower. That's the other thing you need to watch out for too. When you start like really like stretching, you know, like messing with the scale of objects and stuff like that, you know, then you can get that stretched look and that warp look to it. You know, so you gotta, you gotta be careful of that. All right. But from a distance, right. It all looks pretty darn good. Okay. Um, so like I said, though, remember when you make something, you know, like this wall here, it's the material that's going to throw you off, right? So when you get, like I said, go back in a window, go in your material editing, all right? This unnamed material is the default material, all right? So if you change the texture on this unnamed material, anything else that you make from this point on, and it doesn't have to be a cube, right? So if you go back and you create, um, a sphere, Let's create a sphere, place that there. Whoa. All right. So you can see you have a big concrete ball. That's kind of cool. Kind of not very cool, but it's kind of cool. Let's give it, give it a little bit of girth. <laughs> so, um, but anyhow, you know, there you go. So you can make, I don't know, maybe if you have a use for a big giant concrete ball, then there you go. But this is what I'm getting at is you don't want to keep, you don't want to rename your unnamed material, right? Because that's your rename. Jesus mighty, what am I even talking about? <laughs> you don't, you don't want to give that the texture. You want to create your object, you know, whatever your object is, 
um, you know, know what you're going after. Right. So if this is going to be a wall or maybe you just, uh, I don't know, like I said, maybe the whole purpose is going to be a wall. So you create this cube here um, and get rid of that material there, turn it back into a, a white cube. You can see how it changed all of them just like that because it's the unnamed material that it changed. All right. And then export this, save it, export it. Now, typically I don't do this right within the map itself. Well, actually, I lie. I actually do. <laughs> it's usually when I'm working on something, I'm like, crap, I need a wall here or I need a different sidewalk, or I need something, right? And I'll just build it. I'll build it right there on the spot. I'll check it out. Hey, yeah, that looks pretty good. Then I will export it. I'll export that object. Like, you know, you just saw me do where I exported it to my desktop, right? Open that up inside my, uh, my text editor. Like you see here, I gave it a different material, right? Named it wall material. Now I'm not sure. I'm not going to save the map. I'm not going to do that. Um, but I would think that it has to give it a new material ID. If not, this material ID matches the unnamed material. So it must have given it a new material ID. And I would think it would have to. Um, but anyhow, and that's you, you've seen, that's, that's the way I did it, right? So I exported it. I gave it a new name, saved it, re-imported onto the map. And now you have two different, you know, materials. Right. So you have that wall material, which this one I think was, right? Yep. Wall material. And then you had your unnamed material. And you could put multiple materials uh, within one object, right? So if you're building, oh, I don't know, whatever you might be building, right? So let's say you did the brick wall or this sidewalk here. Um, and you wanted to put like a, either a concrete cap on the top of that wall. Right. So you can mix those materials. So you put the concrete, which is, you know, the wall material. And then maybe you did another brick material. Right. You know, what I'm talking about, have you ever seen the brick walls where it's a brick wall and then on the top of it, you got that little concrete runner. That's what I mean. You can use more than one object. Uh, so you, you, you put that on there, you build them separately. Right. So export that and save it as a brick material. You know, and you already had your, your wall material saved and you just mix those, you know, build your wall and then put the concrete over top of it and then save that as a single object. All right. So like I said, it's, you're limited to your own creativity and your own imagination. So if you suck at this, it's, <laughs> it's not my fault, <laughs> but that's what I'm here for. I'm here to, you know, show, you know, share some tips with you and tricks and, and how I do things and how to get better at, you know, creating maps, right? Because it can be fun. It can be a lot of fun. And I think a lot of guys get into this and they're like, the hell with this, right? Because for one, Giants Editor is far behind, like any of the other editors you're going to use. Like, you know, when you get into like Unity and I don't know what are Unreal Engine and stuff like that, all those game engines have their own editors, right? So we are way behind in that respect. But it's not that much of a limitation, right? So you've seen some of the maps out there are gorgeous. How did they make them? They made them in here. Now you might want to dabble in Blender and, you know, and try to learn a few things in there. It can only help you. Um, but like I said, you're not that, that limited, right? You know, there's lots and lots of things you can do within this editor, you know, to help yourself. All right. So as I can, I'll try to do more videos on, uh, I really want to do a let's map series, right? So you can kind of watch me, you know, go through the entire process of creating a map, you know, everything from the starting phase to fleshing it out to the whole nine yards uh, might get boring sometimes, but it would still be interesting. Now, unfortunately I'm a better part of the way through my next map. So we're probably not going to do it on that map. Um, I don't know. I'm looking to get my new studio set up pretty soon. So maybe then, that will become a little bit easier to get some of this stuff done. But anyhow, like I said, this video is starting to run a little bit long. Uh, I just wanted to give you some pointers on, like I said, how you can repurpose objects uh, so they don't look stale anymore. It doesn't look like the same house over and over and over. You know, you can build things for yourself within the editor, you know, just by, uh, like I said, either one, repurposing it and use a concrete slab you know, from the bottom of the fence, that could easily be a curb. That could be any number of things, right? Or just, you know, making your own primitives, your own cube, your own spheres, your own whatever, give them, 
you know, give them your own texture. Maybe you found one on the internet. Maybe it's something that, you know, you pulled from the base game. You get the idea, but uh, there's a lot that you can do, you know, and you're only limited by your own creativity and imagination. So I hope that video helped you at least a little bit. I feel like I was kind of going on and on there, but anyhow, I'm going to leave it at that. So with that being said, I am Bauer Brown and I will see you on the next one.